Hello, my name is Brad Flubacher and I'm a consulting engineer with Techsoft 3D. In this video, I will help you get started using Hoops Exchange to access and reuse CAD data in your engineering software application. Hoops Exchange is a C API that allows you to read native CAD files such as SolidWorks, ProE, and NX, as well as standardized formats such as STEP and IGES. The contents of these files is read into a data model based on the ISO standard PRC format. Once it's in Exchange, you can use a variety of APIs to retrieve the data that's important to you. This video will step you through the process of downloading Exchange and setting up a basic development environment. I'll show you the steps that are required to obtain your license and how to build and run some of the sample applications that ship with Exchange. We'll review a few of the more important parts of the Exchange documentation, and finally, I'll share a few tips with you to help understand the API conventions for easing the process of incorporating Exchange capabilities into your application. Let's get started by navigating to developer.techsoft3d.com. This is the web portal for all of the developer resources offered by Techsoft 3D. Click on the Hoops Products button and choose Hoops Exchange. On the page that appears, you'll find links for downloading the current version, as well as previous versions of Hoops Exchange for each of the supported platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and mobile platforms. I'll be using the Windows download, but other platform packages are very similar. I've clicked on Windows, which reveals some details about the download. Clicking on the download button begins the download. If you haven't already authenticated yourself with the developer zone, you may be prompted for your username and password. With the package downloaded, I'm going to next uncompress the zip file. There is no installer, so the uncompressed contents of the package are all you need to get started, with just one exception, the license file. So next we'll download a trial license file and place it in the include folder of the product distribution you just uncompressed. Clicking on the License Generator button will take you to the Hoops License Generator page. From this page, you can download full licenses you've previously purchased or a time-limited evaluation license. Scroll down to the License Header section and right-click on the Download the C Header button. Click on the option in your browser's context menu to download the linked file. This is usually Save Target As. When the Save As dialog appears, navigate to the Include folder of the Exchange installation. Click OK and overwrite the existing file. The existing file is just a placeholder, so it can be safely overridden. So at this point, you have a licensed installation of Hoops Exchange, and you're ready to build and run some of the samples that ship with it. But before we do, I'd like to take a moment and explore a bit more of the content of the Developer Zone. Back in the browser, I'd like to point out a few useful tools you'll want to take advantage of. Again, click on the Hoops Products button, but this time choose the Hoops Demo Viewers. The Hoops Demonstration Viewer is a native Windows application that integrates Hoops Visualize, Exchange, and Publish. You can use it to easily gain information about input CAD files you're interested in. You can get a sense of how much time is required to load the file, render it graphically, and you can even explore the various pieces of metadata that are contained in the file that are available to you through the Hoops Exchange API. Take notice of the checkbox on the file open dialog. It's used to reveal a variety of options that are available to you when reading a file with Exchange. You can request an extension to the Hoops Demo Viewer license by sending an email to support at techsoft3d.com. Also in the developer zone is where you'll find a link for the latest version of the Exchange documentation. If you need the documentation locally, you'll see below there are links to download a zip file. This contains the entire online package. Our product documentation for Hoops Exchange is presented in three high-level categories, overview, programming guide, and of course the API reference. The overview section provides valuable information for the newcomer, like the technical overview, which describes the basics of Hoops Exchange. Take a minute and read this over at your own pace. You'll pick up some basics about the ISO certified PRC format for storing CAD data. PRC is the native format for Hoops Exchange. It can store all aspects of the data model, including product structure, polygonal BREP part definitions, as well as PMI and metadata. Another useful part of the overview section is the file formats page. On this page, you'll find a graphic that I'm sure you'll refer to a lot. This shows a color-coded diagram of the various file formats supported by Exchange. 
The colors reflect Exchange's ability to read and or write a particular format. Be sure to scroll down to see other useful sections. These tables show additional details for the supported formats. The last part of the overview section that I'd like to point out is the release notes. This is updated with every version, so you could refer to this anytime you're considering upgrading. It's a great way to keep up to date on what's new and improved in the product. You'll find API deprecations, changes, additions. You'll also find any updates in file format support. There are links at the top of the release notes page for looking at fixed bugs lists and deprecated functions. In the programming guide section of the Exchange documentation, you'll find a variety of pages containing in-depth coverage of the different capabilities that Exchange offers. When you're getting started, the first few sections are the most useful. The introduction explains how to build an application that uses Exchange. It describes the process for initializing and terminating Exchange. And at the bottom of the page, you'll find a reference to a class that wraps initialization and termination by object scope. You'll encounter this class throughout our sample code. When you're first getting started with Exchange, it's very helpful to understand a few key principles of the design. The API conventions subsection describes a few of these concepts. I typically recommend that programmers who are new to the Exchange API read over sections one through five of the programmer's guide. This will expose you to the concepts of the Exchange data model. The last portion of the documentation that I'd like to mention is the API reference. It contains typical Doxygen style documentation of the APIs and structures used by Exchange. It also has a useful search feature for finding material in the programming guide as well as API reference. Now that you have a licensed copy of Exchange installed and you're familiar with the product documentation, let's wrap things up by looking at some sample code that ships with the product. Open the Samples folder in your Exchange installation folder. Here, you'll find the top-level Visual Studio solution called exchange.sln. Double-click on this to open the workspace. In the solution, you'll see there are a variety of sample projects that show various aspects of the Exchange API and some common workflows. For the purposes of becoming more familiar with the product and its capabilities, I would suggest that you begin by focusing on two projects. First, take a look over what is the most common and simple use of Exchange, file-to-file -file conversion. This workflow can be found in the sample called import-export. Take just a moment to read through the source code of import-export.cpp. You'll see the implementation couldn't be more straightforward. Run the sample by setting it as your startup project in Visual Studio. If you build it and run it without modifying command line arguments, there are defaults that are used, but I'd suggest you specify the required arguments and run some files that you care about through the conversion process. Finally, I'd like to leave you with an introduction to one of the most useful pieces of sample code that we provide, PRC to XML. As the name implies, this sample application reads an input file into Exchange and it writes the data it contains to an XML file. This is useful for a few reasons. At the code level, this sample code shows you how to reliably traverse the data structures you'll find in Exchange. You can use this as a reference when you're unsure how objects might be related. This sample is also useful because if you're looking for a specific piece of data, you can run your input through PRC to XML and examine the output to better understand how to access the data that you're after. Just be aware the XML files can become quite large depending on the input. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this walkthrough of Hoops Exchange. If you followed along, you have successfully installed and licensed Exchange. You've become familiar with the most important parts of our documentation, and you probably successfully built and run some sample code. As always, we're here to help. If you have any questions through your work with any of the TechSoft 3D products, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help make you successful.